So to understand assignment statements in greater detail, I'm going to take you through a series of three examples. The examples will grow in complexity and we will use these three examples to understand precisely what we mean by an assignment statement. So the general form always looks like this. You have an equal to which is not a test for equality, it's the assignment operator. Just like we have the plus operator and the floor division operator, we have a special single equal to operator which is not checking for equality, it is an assignment operator. And on the left hand side of the assignment operator, we write the name of a variable. There are some rules about what legal variable names are. We will come to those later on. But for now, we will write some name of a variable. We have seen examples like m and d and uh, numerator and denominator, which are more meaningful. We will try to choose meaningful variable names. And on the right hand side, we can have any expression. So as a quick example, here is an assignment statement. On the left hand side, I have the variable named m and on the right hand side, I have this expression 19 plus 31. Now, what does it mean for Python to actually execute or run this assignment statement? What happens when Python runs this little piece of code? Well, it always performs two steps. The details are a little bit complicated, so we will hide some of those details in this light gray font. I don't want you to pay attention to the, these right away. We will start with this simple e example and illustrate the most important parts of these first two steps. So firstly, we evaluate the expression, which remember is on the right hand side. So we will evaluate the expression as an object. The expression could be complicated. In this case, you can see that the expression involves the integer object 19 and it also involves the integer object 31 and it involves the plus operator on those two integer objects. So step one is telling us firstly evaluate this expression as an object. So somehow the Python interpreter is going to take this expression and evaluate that 19 plus 31 is the integer object 50. So we have done step one. Once again, for now, ignore the details in the light gray font. Now we have a variable on the left hand side. So step two is telling us label this object, the one that we have just evaluated, label it with the name of this variable. So the variable is called m and we just label this object with this tag. So I'd really like you to think of this variable like a little sticky tag that we can attach to an object. So the meaning of this assignment statement is calculate the uh, object on the right hand side, evaluate that, and then take this label and stick it on this object. That is an assignment statement. Now that we have seen how it works on this very simple example, let's take a slightly more complex example. In this example, we have two assignment statements. And whenever we have multiple statements, we execute them in the sequence given. So first we will do the assignment x equals 2, then we will do the assignment y equals x. This time we will actually carefully read the details that we had earlier hidden. So let's start with x equals 2. That's very simple. We just evaluate the right hand side object that just produces the integer 2 and then we take the variable and tag it to this object. So that assignment statement just involves taking this label and attaching it to this object. Now what about the second assignment statement? The second assignment statement says, again, evaluate the right hand side. Our details say, evaluate the expression as an object. But now, let's read this. It says, replace each variable in the expression with the object it currently labels. So how do we evaluate the right hand side x? Well, x 
labels some object. So when we evaluate x, we just get that object. Now label this object, the one that we have just evaluated, with the name of the variable that is on the left hand side. So that is y. It says do not move any labels that the evaluated object already has. So we are not going to move x. But what are we going to do with y? We have to uh, label this object. But this object already has a label. So what does it mean to label this with y? Well, it just means put this label on the object. It doesn't matter if that object already has a label. You can have an object with multiple labels on it. The analogy that I like to think of is, imagine this object that we have evaluated like a suitcase. Now I can have a suitcase and I can put a baggage tag on that suitcase. So now that suitcase has a label on it. But now someone else could come along and put another baggage tag on the same suitcase. And that's okay. So it's not a problem to have an object with multiple labels on it. The important thing is do not modify any labels that the object already has. Now let's take a look at a third example. In this case, the first assignment statement is just like before and we already know that that results in an integer object 2 labeled with the variable x. Now let's do the second assignment statement. Again, we have to evaluate the expression which is x plus 1 and we have to replace any variable, in this case x, with the object it currently labels. So x currently labels the integer object 2. So when we are trying to evaluate the right hand side, x evaluates to this object and then of course I have the other object integer 1 and I have the plus operator between them. So now I go ahead and evaluate this and this results in this integer object 3. Step 2 says label this object with the name variable. Well, the name variable on the left hand side is x. It says do not modify any labels that the evaluated object already has. The evaluated object has no labels on it. So we don't have to worry about this part. But we do have to label this object with x. But hang on, x is already labeling this object. So what does it mean to do this assignment statement? It's very simple we move the label to the evaluated object. So this object no longer has the label x. The label x has moved to this new object. So this is exactly how an assignment statement works. If you ever find yourself getting confused about how a particular assignment statement works, I would like you to come back and review these three examples.